let me finally welcome all of you to today's session of SEC Poet Auditing and Investigations. And to thank you for making sure you attend consistently with the attendant benefits that will come from it. Any new person joining will be marked after or close to the end of the lecture. In our last interaction, I took you through the course outline and uh, we dealt with introduction to investigations, wherein we discussed the types of, I mean, differences between audit and investigations and the types of classes of investigations. We gave you the reporting guidelines for investigations. And I remember that somebody asked for the stages of an investigation, which I told you will more or less depend on the class of investigation being conducted. Although in general terms, there may be some general approaches which can be deduced by the time we go through some specific classes of investigations. Uh, as part of the types of investigations which you are, which we discussed, we had about four groups, investment decisions, prospectus reports, investigations under the Companies Act, special investigations. Today, we'll be treating about two of those classes of investigations. Under investment decisions, we'll be looking at the purchase of business, purchase of business and participation in partnership, in a partnership. And then we'll be looking at the issue of accountants report for prospectus purposes and uh, the report on the profit forecast, which is included in prospectus. Those are the things we'll be looking at briefly today. Um, like I said, the attendance today is quite encouraging. I wish you, you, you keep it up like that. Newcomers who have just joined in the last few minutes, can we see you for uh, attendance marking? Because the, the network failed and my system and my computer did not end my lecture yesterday. I don't want that to happen to you. Let me do your attendance now. Who is a Zoom user who has no name? Two persons yeah. are Zoom users here without their names. Who are, who are they? So I'll go to me, Anthony, sir. Eh? I'll go to me, Anthony. So go to me, no, your solo, Anthony. Yes, sir. Alias Zoom user. Next time when you join us, you change your name. I think the system allows you to do that. Yes, but, but that's okay. Any other person? I'm yes, not sir. sure. Oh, if you yes, sir. I'm not sure. Yes, sir. Okay. Who else has not been taken? That seems to be the last two. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Uh, let me look on. I have I have taken you. I've taken the Gundeli already. Okay, sir. Hmm. I've taken the Gundeli. So let's uh, continue to uh, make uh, progress. I thought it was blessing who was talking about the stages of an investigation in the last class. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So maybe you, you quickly just want to note this and see how it applies to the stages of investigations that will be taken later. Investigations may be divided into the following stages. One, review and summary of previous year's accounts. Two, a detailed check of the latest set of accounts. Three, future prospects of the company and for consideration of matters which are not directly of a financial nature. If you look at what I've just given you, those ones are talking about 
uh, purchase of business or investment decisions generally. But I think in general terms, when you talk of investigations, the procedures will include, first and foremost, one, agree your terms of, your, your, your terms of reference, your terms of reference with uh, the, the, the person engaging you for the assignment. You must have, agree your terms of reference. When those uh, terms of reference are verbally agreed, you then document it by way of letter of engagement, which the investigator writes to the engage the the engager, uh, the person the person for whom you are investigating. You do him a letter of engagement detailing what you agreed, which will include uh, what you agreed to do, how you want to do it, uh, the, the the materials you consider in the course of doing it. And uh, what your what your report will look like. All of those things will be in the terms of reference. I mean, it will be it will be in the letter of engagement. That letter is important to, so as to minimize uh, disagreements, disagreements, and for dispute resolution, in case there are disagreements between the parties con that, are, that, that are contracting. After you have agreed your terms of uh, reference, the next thing to do is to see what 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 are the information available for your use. You want to gather information as much as possible from the entity, but both in financial terms and non-financial terms as well. Like we told you, investigation make use of both qualitative and quantitative information, unlike auditing, which is mainly financial. So you 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 want to make sure that uh, you gather information as much as possible about about the business. The information may include the kind of workforce, the businesses they transact the operations which they have entered into the financial summary for a number of years as you may be restricted and some other things that you want to do then after you have assembled the information needed the next thing again is to analyze is to analyze analyze the information you have received analyze that information for decision making uh what is the analysis going to be about sometimes it may take ratio analysis to talk of liquidity profitability stability and some other uh, ratios that you calculate when you are doing financial statement analysis. So you must analyze the uh, data that you have collected. Uh, after you have analyzed those data, you know, then the next thing is to evaluate, evaluate, evaluate the analysis that you have done with a view to drawing conclusions. <clears throat> Excuse me. With a view to drawing conclusions from your uh, uh, evaluations, you evaluate. Uh, the data, I mean, the analysis in relation to what you've been asked to do, and then you you can then uh, make recommendations on the basis of your uh, evaluation in your report, which you will give to the uh, uh, which you will give to the person that has engaged you. Uh, be careful in your report to leave the decision making to the person engaging you. You are just to recommend. You should recommend in a balanced manner. If this happens, this is likely to be the outcome. If this does not happen, this may be the outcome. Don't don't impress on don't impress it on the uh, person engaging you that this must be done. No, remember you are just to advise. The investigation is merely to advise, uh, to to persuade, not necessarily to impose uh, an opinion on anybody at all. So I think this is what I can just bring out uh, generally as being the phases or the stages or, 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 or steps uh, during an investigation. Uh, I will pause a little to take your questions, then I will go into the specific case of purchase of business. And then before we go to accountants uh, prospectors. Yes, can I have your uh, observations or questions or reactions for a moment, if any? Not at this time, I mean. No, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So if we are still fairly okay, let's look at a uh, uh, case of purchase of uh, a business. In, in the case of purchase of business, 
we want to look at the matters to consider before investigation, the general procedures to be followed during investigation, you know, and the form, of, the form and content of the report uh, after the investigation. Let's look at the matters to consider before the Don't forget that all that we are considering here has to do with purchase of business. In any case, we are you talking about purchase of business, you know. Uh, purchase of business may be somebody acquiring shares in an entity or somebody taking over the entire company of another of another person. These are the issues we talk about under purchase of a business. Okay. So in purchase of a business, before commencing the uh, investigation, what are the matters to consider? Number one, the The matters to be considered in the investigations and those to be excluded would include the number of years uh, accounts that will be examined. How many number of years accounts are you going to examine? If you are not restricted, you are at liberty to determine the number of years that will be useful to you, subject to availability anyway. Is it three years accounts? Is it five years accounts? Is it just a year account? Which ones are you supposed to exclude? That those are the things to decide. Number two, the funds that, that is available to purchase the business, how much does the person engaging you have with which he wants to purchase the business? What is the price that the seller is asking for for the business? That's the third one. The price the seller is asking for the business. And number four, whether the purchaser intends to take an active part in running the business or not. Five, in what capacity does the purchaser intend to continue to employ the present owner of the business? and even his fellow directors or key personnel. So some of these matters and many more, which you may also have an idea about, will have to be considered. Uh, in a, before you commence an investigation into purchase of business, about the general procedures to follow on commencement of the investigation, you then have the followings. One, you must obtain from the client a written confirmation of the precise terms of reference, you know, and that I told you that that written confirmation is, is to be written by you yourself, which we call letter of engagement. A letter of engagement flows from the from the investigator to the appoint uh, the person appointing him. So detailing the, the, the scope of work involved, the amount available for the investment, the form of reports required, and the deadlines for completing the exercise. All of those are in the terms of reference. That is the first uh, stage. The second one, collect copies of the detailed accounts for each of the years to be covered. Also obtain information of non-accounting nature about the business to be acquired. And the third one is, if the accounts have not been audited, the accountant will verify the major items in the accounts. In the case of other accounts, any qualification which the auditor has given to such accounts may be noted by the investigator so that you can also uh, make adjustments as appropriate. And then number four, you, you, you will be required to make adjustments to the accounts of the past years in the light of likely future conditions of the business. And uh, in, in, in this case, maybe there are post balance sheet events or there are other subsequent things which have come to light after the audit has been concluded, which the, audit, which the investigator is aware of, which may affect the amount stated in the uh, income, uh, income statement and the statement of financial position. He may want to make adjustments as, as appropriate. Then he may analyze the accounts so as to, that's the next thing, number five, analyze the accounts so as to determine trends in profitability, liquidity, financial structure, and operating efficiency. It may also be necessary to value the business, including any goodwill which may arise on acquisition. Okay. Then the sixth one is evaluate the results of your inquiries and draw your conclusions. And then seventh, draw draft a report to incorporate your findings and recommendations. If you look at all these seven stages, they follow through that which I had earlier discussed with you in general terms. 
So uh, it should not be difficult for you to follow, obtain the terms of reference, obtain copies of information which are necessary. If accounts are audited, good. If the accounts are not audited, carry out your own verification. Then next, make adjustments as may be appropriate in the light of subsequent events or realities of the business subsequent to its audit. Analyze information which are before you. Evaluate the information you have analyzed. Conclude and then make a report to the owner or to the person engaging you. Are those ones making sense to us a bit? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Thank God. Leble, Alpha, are you still here or you are busy flying pancake? Uh, is my daughter a blessing not there? I'm here. I'm here. I will have said you should somebody should wake you up, but you are in different places. Okay. No, sir. Okay, you are not sleeping yet. All right. So. Then what will now be the form and contents of the report that you are going to render? You know, the like I told you, leave the decision whether or not to purchase the business to the client. You understand that? That, that is not to say that you will not be making some recommendations that may be, may be persuasive. So the report will summarize the conclusions of investigations, including giving the number of basis for valuing the business, you know, then to record any major facts which were brought to light during the investigation. Three, note any areas where the investigation was incomplete, e.g. in verifying stock quantities as the stock take was not attended by the investigators. Four, include details of work done, calculations and figures on which the conclusions are based. As an appendix in the report, don't forget this. Don't, don't uh, over, overcrowd your body of report with uh, statistics and data. Reduce them to appendix, but you may refer to them where you are giving your report in the body, uh, where you are giving your report. Uh -huh. the, you, you may make reference to it in the body, but let all calculations and workings be shown as an appendix. So you say include details of work done, calculations and figures on which the conclusions are based as an appendix to the report. Then record details of areas where the work of others was relied upon, e.g. the auditors of the previous year's accounts, the valuers of properties other than fixed assets, and some other valuers or other experts which may be relied upon and the context in which they were actually relied upon. So uh, those are the things which you want to see in the in the in the in the report. In subsequent example, we may be giving you maybe when we get to accountants report, you be you may be able to see a specimen of such a report. But in this case, this is the way investigations uh, uh, operate into the purchase of business. If you are asked to do a report, it's the thing you can simply write uh, detailing what I have just summarized to you. So on that, that, that is on purchase of business. And uh, I must say this, that the purchase of business will also vary from the kind of business that you are purchasing. You can just be flexible in your presentation to give uh, uh, recognition to that specific type of business. All that we have said here are just in general terms. They are just in general terms. So the question may likely be telling you the name of the company, the idea behind the disposal, and some other things which have happened that would be reflecting in your write-up or uh, in, 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 your, in, in your report. All of those things are the things you must consider. But these are the general guidance, general terms that you may be asked to speak to in any examination question, but that you may have to consider in practice if you are carrying out an investigation. Incidentally, I once did an investigation for a client very long ago, and uh, I, I, the that resulted in me being brought to the court to give expert opinion. You know, when you see lawyers wanting to harass you, challenging my expertise. But I told them I'm a member of the history of Charter Accountants of Nigeria, and that I'm licensed to practice, and they took a copy of, of my practice license as, a, as, a, as an exhibit that shows my expertise. And they looked at the account you have and saw my name there as a current member who, who is not in subscription. That was when they listened to me to give my opinion, you know, and I had to tell them the, the detailed work which I did. It was an investigation for fraud. 
a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a at the end of the day, you know, they get on judiciary. The case lingered, lingered, lingered until the owner, until my, until my client died. That was the end of case. Hmm. Me said, I quickly got past so that they would not pick me next. You know, you see the risk in the employing church members? Eh? Yeah. Can't you see the risk there? Yes, sir. Steve does not see the yes, risk. Yes, we can, sir. I, yeah. I see. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, people repay good with evil most times. But that mm. should not deter you from doing good. Don't worry, don't worry about them. You understand. But it was such a yes, good sir. experience. It was such a good experience. But what you can do for people, just do it for them. Bring them too close sometimes is a risk you. I, I can I can I can tell you that free of charge. You know, it's risky. Now let us go to the case of a partnership. A case uh, 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 of, of a partnership. Somebody wants to acquire interest in a partnership. And uh, and uh, one is retiring, another person wants to wants to come up, you know, to, to join the partnership. And the person who wants to join has now engaged you. He has now engaged you as uh, an investigator to help him find out why he should join or why he should not join. The suggestions were made available to you. And the question now is, what will you consider? Or what steps will you, what procedures will you, will you adopt in the revenue and the advice that you are going to give to the incoming partner? You know, so we, we, we start. The main procedures which should be adopted in arriving at the advice to be given to the incoming partner include the following one. Don't forget again, number one, the precise terms of reference for the assignment, which have already been discussed verbally, should be set down in writing and agreed with the incoming partner. The letter of engagement should continue the object, scope, and depth of the investigation and the date when the report is required by the, by the, by, by the proposed uh, partner. This should help to avoid any future misunderstandings as to the extent of the accountant's duties. Is that okay? And then secondly, if the partnership has auditors, the investigating accountant would normally get in touch with such auditors as a matter of professional courtesy. The auditors, although not obliged to, to do so, could very easily assist the investigating accountant with information which will be useful for the exercise. And you know that's part of information gathering, isn't it? The next thing is to gather information relevant to the investigation. The accountant should obtain copies of recently audited financial statements, maybe in the last five years, copy of partnership agreement, details of the background and recent history of the business, details of the systems of accounting and internal control, if available. Again, that stage is information gathering, both quantitative and quantitative, both financial and non-financial. The next stage, which is the fourth, detailed work should be carefully planned. The completion of the existing partners and the auditors will be necessary. In addition, if the work of other experts like valuers will be used, it will be advisable to plan for such an expert to be available when required. So work plan, you know, we didn't really emphasize this earlier. So plan of the work to be done may be, may, may be injected into our earlier procedures. The next one, the other accounts should be analyzed. You know, after collecting information now, we are now at the analysis. An initial review of the accounts should indicate whether adjustments should be made to the figures. It should be ascertained that the results of the various years have been drawn up on, on a comparable basis using acceptable and consistent accounting policies. The next thing, ratios should be computed in order to indicate trends in liquidity. That is, that is part of the analysis as well. They may, they may put together trend in liquidity, profitability, and operational efficiency. Any unusual variation should be investigated further. If there are figures relating to other firms in the same type of business, the meta firm comparisons should indicate relative performance of this partnership business. You see, generally, when you, when, when you rely on ratios for decision making, 
you are either comparing ratios of, of the company for different years, or you are comparing the ratio of that company with other companies in the same industry. That's when you can be testing the strength otherwise, the efficiency otherwise of the one that you are investigating. Do we understand that? Okay. Then the validation of goodwill and the other assets of the partnership should be carefully examined. Documents relating to any recent independent validation of the fixed assets should be inspected. Where there are no recent validations have been made, and there is some doubt as to the asset valuation and independent expert value, valuer may be engaged to help us value those assets because goodwill is what the incoming partner will have to pay to the old partners before it's uh, accepted. Another important area is the examination of the partnership agreement. A copy of the previous agreement and a draft copy of the one proposed for the new partnership should be obtained and carefully examined in order to advise the client as to whether or not the terms appear to be reasonable, just, and fair. Next, the new profit sharing arrangements plus adjustments for interest on capital salaries should be carefully examined to show that the client is being offered reasonable terms considering the time, money, and expertise that is going to invest in the partnership. The next one is that it should be established whether the incoming partner will be liable for the previous debts of the partnership, the manner in which the change the partnership is to be dealt with for tax purposes should also be ascertained. And finally, before drawing your conclusion and issuing the report, the accountant should also consider the following general matters. Those are non-financial data now. The general prospects for the partnership business, the impact of recent government policies on the demand for essential commodities, the effect of these on future profits and cash flows. The reason why a new partner is being admitted, executive responsibilities to be assigned to the new partner in a situation where the executive functions are divided. The expiry dates of the lease on the premises, the lease agreements should be examined to ensure that there are no unusual arrangements. Then what about staff loyalty? You know? Then after the detailed analysis and constitution of matters beyond the accounts, the accountant should draw his conclusions and make his appropriate recommendation. The recommendations will then be incorporated in a report to the incoming partner. The information should be presented in a clear and unambiguous manner. The report should clearly refer to the scope of the investigation, work performed, results, and conclusions. It looks lengthy, but it, it is quite logical and easy to follow. If you consider the earlier descriptions which I had given you concerning uh, the general procedures for these investigations. Uh, any question about those? The good, the, good thing, the good thing is that I'm recording so that uh, you can have the tape to, to make up your notes at your convenience. Is that okay? Yes, sir. What new entrance do you notice? Yes, sir. If you are a newcomer, let us see you so that you can be marked. We have marked those who are here. Uh, Yes, sir. The network has always been unstable. Don't worry. Yeah, the, Lord, right. the, the Lord will compensate for your pains. Uh, yeah. I understand. I understand what it is. You know, it's like yes, uh, Anita has to go to the rooftop self to to to, to look for a network. I mean, not be your silly and they look so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so so far so good about purchase of business. We can we can we can let that rest for now. And the acquisition of interest in a partnership as well. Oh. Let that rest. Before the exams, we will determine our soft areas because uh, we, it is good to touch on each and every one of these ones. Let's now look at uh, these twin uh, issues of accountant uh, reports for prospectus. Accountant uh, report for prospectus. I told you before that uh, a prospectus is, a, is an investment document by which uh, 
uh, a company is inviting for subscribers on the stock exchange, on, on, on the capital market, you know? And I told you that in that uh, document, there are so many information contained in it. One of which is uh, the financial, the profit forecast of the business, and then the accountant's report, you know? So the ones that concerned us here is the profit forecast and uh, the accountant's uh, report, you know? So that's what we, we will be considering today. The accountant's report is a report which an accountant is making on the projections in the, in the prospectus as a whole, with a view to seeing whether it is consistent with uh, uh, the other information contained in the prospectus or not. Let us start by looking at the national scope of the accountant's report. The national scope of the accountant's report. You know, that, 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 that may be a good starting point, okay? The nature, when an accountant's report is issued for prospective purposes, the responsibilities of the reporting accountant and the procedures he will apply in carrying out his work are not identical with those of an auditor, although there are a number of similarities. The accountant's report gives an independent statement supported by an opinion of the financial information for the company or the group, which may assist the potential investors in making the decision whether or not to invest. I take that again. The accountant's report gives an independent statement supported by an opinion of the financial information of the company or the group, which may assist the potential investors in making the decision whether or not to invest. You know, the accountant is reporting on the financial projections which are contained in the prospectus, like I told you. So he's giving an opinion on it. You know, uh, so the readers of the prospectus, after looking at, that, at the, the accountant's report, may now decide whether to invest or not. Although a full audit is not normally necessary, the reporting accountant needs to obtain evidence to satisfy himself that the financial information contained in his report gives a true and fair view. Does that make sense to us? That is the nature of the accountant's report. If you are asked to define what the accountant's report is, this is what I will expect from you. Once more, the accountant's report gives an independent statement supported by an opinion of the financial information of the company or the group which may assist the potential investors in making the decision whether or not to invest. Anyhow that you may combine some of those things, we are good to go. Then what is the scope? The scope of the investigation depends on, the, uh, on both the requirements of the Nigerian Stock Exchange as well as the specific instructions of the client. The Stock Exchange requires the accountant's work and report to cover the balance uh, sheet, now called SOFP, and the income statement of the company for the five years preceding the issue. The class instructions may extend the scope beyond these minimum requirements. You know, uh, if it's a second tier securities market, requirement is for three years, not, not five years. The sponsor may require the reporting accountant to prepare a detailed report covering various aspects of the company's business, including its management, profit record, assets and liabilities and prospects. This type of report, known as the long form report, requires extensive investigations well beyond that required for normal stock exchange quotations of a statutory audit. Similarly, a prospectus need not include a profit forecast. However, if a profit forecast is involved, the stock exchange requires the reporting accountant to examine and prepare a separate report on the accounting policies and calculations for the uh, forecast. That is the nature, that is the scope of the accountant's report. What you can deduce from the scope of the accountant's report in what I have just told you is the fact that the scope or extent of work is, is, is determined by both the stock exchange regulations and the person on whose behalf the, uh, the, the investigation is being carried out, okay? The extent of the work which the reporting accountant will need to carry out in relation to his report will be influenced by whether all the financial statements of, to be reported upon have previously been subjected to audit. If the accounts have already been audited, no new audit will, will really be required. The accountant's work will then take the form of reviewing files, documents, and discussions with the company's management, staff, and professional advisors. You know, no vigorous work will be required if accounts are previously audited. 
The work involved may include reviewing the audit working papers relating to the periods to be covered, uh, discussing with the company's management and auditors to identify matters critical, the assessment of profit, or the presentation of uh, results, review the financial statements by computing ratios, identifying significant trends, and investing on usual variations, review the appropriateness of all the accounting policies as well as their compliance with the international accounting standards and the Nigerian gap as well. Furthermore, in order to in order that the financial information is presented, presented on a consistent and comparable basis, the reporting accountant may need to make adjustments to the figures previously reported in the financial statements. This issue of adjusting the accounts will be taken up very soon. You know, why do we what what, what does it mean, what does it mean to make adjustments on the what form? I'll let you know. Then considering and investing, investigating post-balance sheet events in order to ensure that any significant events between the date of the between the date of the uh, financial report, last financial report and the publication of the prospectus are properly reflected in the financial information reported upon. You know, uh, that is taking into account the effect of post balance sheet events. Reviewing the prospectus document as a whole so as to ensure that financial information contained elsewhere in the document does not conflict with that given in the accountant's report. You know, so if the accountant, if the financial statements to be included in the accountant's report have not been previously audited, or if the reporting accountant is not satisfied with the financial information included in the auditor accounts, it will extend its investigations accordingly. And so those are the things which uh, uh, you must pay attention to by way of the initial scope and the extent of work which it needs to do in general terms. Don't forget that the person who is the accountant in this case is also a qualified accountant as skilled, skilled enough like the uh, external auditor as well, usually an external audit firm as well, but not the one involved in the initial audit of the accounts. So that's, this, this is the way it uh, goes. Okay, uh, let's then quickly go to the contents of the accountant's report, which will include profit and loss accounts, dividends retained earnings of the company, or uh, if it has subsidiaries of the group, you know, for five years or three years for second tier securities market. That is, there will be, there'll be, there'll be financial results for five years or three years as the case may be, whether normal stock, stock market or second tier uh, uh market you know balance sheet in summary form of the company or, or, or of the company at the end of each of the five immediate preceding accounting periods number one income statement for five years two statement of financial position for five years three the statement of financial position of the company at the end of the last accounting period being reported upon the immediate past re, uh, period okay accounting policies on which the financial information has been prepared the department accountants opinion as to whether the financial information gives a true and fair view. Particulars of any capital of the company which is under option. Particulars of flotation costs and preliminary expenses. You see, this is a long requirement by the stock exchange, but then you just have to see as many of them as you may remember uh, under exam condition. You know, particulars of flotation costs and pre preliminary expenses. Particulars of any commission and discounts given in the last five years in connection with the issue of shares by the company or its subsidiary. A statement that, that no other accounts have been made to a date subsequent to the latest accounts on which the reporting uh, accountant. Can you just, 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 just a moment, please? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody has been disturbing me on phone for some time, and I've replied the person before the commencement of this lecture. He says he wants to transfer from his school to Futa to do accounting. I tell him, say, we know they do accounting again. Have you still they do? No. No, sir. But he still will not agree. 
Ye kaptan ye top. Let him come. Let him come. Let him come. He should come. <laughs> Where well, how is he going to come? Because gang will not offer him a place. It's not. I don't know. And you know, my name is still on the site. Uh, still on the website as the HOD. And my number is there. We need to do it. They just like footage, right? Because they know that school fees are going up generally, and that footage may be cheap. <laughs> okay. So we were talking about for a particular sort of location cost and preliminary expenses, particular sort of any commission and discounts given in the last five years, in connection with the issue of shares, a statement that no additional accounts have been made up to a day subsequent to the latest accounts on which the reporting accountants report is based. In relation to any profit forecast, a report of the on the accounting, accounting basis and calculations used for the forecast, any other matters which the reporting accountant considers relevant for the purpose of his report. What I would suggest in this case is that when you are asked to give the contents of an accountant's report uh, as prescribed by the SEC and uh, Stock Exchange, uh, just make sure that you are able to give the, the more important ones and at least five, especially the income statement for five years, the statement of financial position for five years, the uh, accounts preceding the date of the report. Uh, that's three already. Accounting policy on which the accounts are based. That's for the reporting accountant's opinion on the truth and fairness of the financial information. That's five. I mean, those ones are tangential and very straightforward. If you can remember all those ones, you are good to go because any five points we we will not be out of it. Nobody will be asking you to give all 11 points in the exam when you when when it's not an open book examination anyway. So that's about the uh, accountant's uh, report. We have dealt with the nature and scope of the accountant's report. We have looked at the contents of the accountant's report, as, especially as required by the NSC. You know, uh, let's see what happens on uh, the profit forecast. Profit forecast, which is because that is the second part of the of the of the syllabus. It mentioned both. Uh, prospectus and company uh, forecast, you know. Uh, on that profit forecast, what are we going to look at here? Yeah. Let me see how a question goes. Let me see what kind of question that may necessitate such a, how, uh, in, in what way the forecast questions may be asked. Okay. Just a moment. I, uh, I will, I'm, I'm getting, I'm consulting somewhere to see how, oh, okay. Uh, okay. In relation to profit forecast, you may be asked to consider the extent to which you are responsible for reporting on the assumptions in the profit forecast, okay? Uh, to what extent are you responsible for reporting on the assumptions in the profit forecast? Okay. And then list and briefly discuss the matters you will direct your attention to when reviewing the accounting policies and calculations and procedures followed by the company regarding the profit forecast. That is one way of uh, looking at it. Another way again is uh, you are the auditor of a listed manufacturing company which intends to raise additional capital by means of a right seizure. You have been asked to report on the profit forecast which will be included in the directors by the directors in the issue documents. Where the issue documents, they are talking about prospectus in this case. Now, take the fundamental points you will agree with the directors as part of your preliminary consideration before accepting the instructions to report. Two, take the main matters to which you will direct your attention in carrying out your review of the forecast. And then list the statements that you would normally expect to make in your report on the profit forecast. Okay. From, from all of this now, at least the matters to which our attention will be directed has been indicated. The extent of your responsibility for reporting of the assumptions has been indicated. Then the points that you will agree before because before engaging on the job, 
uh, is, is also indicated, and then the statement that you normally make in your report, making four aspects. Maybe we make a start with uh, what do you need to agree before engaging in the report to be your agreement before engaging in the report. So the fundamental points which will be agreed with the directors before the reporting accountant accepted the instructions to report would include the following one, the purpose for which the profit forecast has been prepared and the accountant's report is required. You know, uh, that is that it should that it should be set out in a letter of engagement that the assignment is not an audit. And therefore, the accountants will not be expressing a true and fair opinion. The third one is that the directors will assume full responsibility for the forecast and signify this by formal adoption by the board. And then the period covered by the forecast, is it five years, is it three years? No, mat then five, no material restriction on the scope of the accountant's work unless the matter is dealt with in the report. Okay, see it? That the accountants that the accountants will have sufficient time to obtain the information to enable them to properly exercise their professional judgment. And seven, that licensing will be established with any, uh, any other financial advisor to ensure that all parties understand their responsibilities. All of these uh, ones which are the matters to be considered are the things we talk about that the terms of reference ought to be agreed before the engagement. All of those ones are just details of the terms of reference which are normally agreed before an engagement is uh, considered. Okay. Then, what are the matters to which your attention will be will be drawn? To which matters are you drawing attention in the course of the work? Let's now see matters to which we are drawing attention. One, the initial and background of the of, of, of the company's business, the accounting policies normally followed by the company the assumptions on which the profit forecast is based, and the procedures followed by the company in the preparation of the forecast. These are the, the, the matters to be considered. You know, with reference to each of these subdivisions, the following points are validly made. You, the, summary of, the summary of what we have is what I have just given to you. You know, background of a client's business, Review of the recent history of the client using information heard on previous years, uh, audit rights, and all the rest. You know, the review of the accounting policies which the company adopts. Uh, assumptions on which the forecast has been based will normally be indicated as notes to the accounts as well. Uh, assumptions, uh, then, then the procedures followed by a company uh, uh, review, will be reviewed by the reporting accountant, who will normally consider a number of other matters as well. The summary of what we need is the four things which I've mentioned to you. Nature and background of the company's business, accounting policies normally followed, assumptions on which the forecasts are based, procedures by the company in which the forecasts were prepared. All of those ones are the things to be dealt with by the reporting accountant. What would then be in the accountant's report? What, 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 would, be, what, what, what would be the report on the forecast that you're going to render? The statements which a reporting accountant would normally make in a report on a profit forecast will include the following one specific identification of the profit forecast and documents to which the report refers. The fact that the sole responsibility for the forecast lies with the directors, including the underlying assumption, in which case this accountant now is a is a is not claiming responsibility, but is saying, saying that the director do and will. The fact that the reporting accountant has examined the calculations and accounting policies in the preparation of the forecast, and the fact that no audit has taken place or has been carried out, and that the forecast includes results from unaudited interim accounts, if this is the case. And lastly, whether in the reporting accountant's opinion, the forecast has been properly prepared in accordance with the stated accounting practice uh, policies and with the stated assumptions, and is presented on the basis consistent with the accounting policies normally adopted by the company. These are a few of the things which will be kept in mind by uh, anybody that is engaged to report uh, on, a, 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 on the profit forecast. Don't forget, profit forecast differs from the accountant's report. The accountant's report contains those things which are earlier listed for you. 
for the current forecast now, it's done by management, and the auditor is only, is only reporting on, on, on such forecast. I want to see if I can give you a specimen accountant's report. Okay, so you you may take the you may take this report as a specimen. Uh, you may painstakingly download it, write it out, and then see if you can make anything out of it. You know, a specimen accountant's report on the profit forecast. You know, uh, the title will be accountant's report to the directors of. Uh, XYZ Limited underlined accountant's report, not auditor's report, to oh, accountant's report to, to the directors of XYZ Limited. Don't forget, we said that audit, audit report is made to the shareholders, but that accountant's report or, or investigation reports are made to those that uh, commission the investigation, in this case, management. So, accountant's report to the directors of XYZ Limited. Next paragraph. We have reviewed the accounting policies and calculations for the profit forecast of XYZ Limited, for which the directors are solely responsible for the period ended 31st uh, December 2022, set out on pages X to X of this uh, circular. The forecast include results shown by the unaudited interim accounts for the period to uh, 38th. Uh, is, uh, 31st December 2022. In our opinion, the forecast, so far as the accounting policies and calculations are concerned, have been properly compiled on the footing of the assumptions made by the board set out on pages X to X of this circular and are presented on a basis consistent with the accounting policies normally adopted by the business. Signed, AO. Akinduko and Co. Chartered Accountant. Location Akure, Nigeria. Dated this seventh day of February 2023. This is a specimen accountant's report. That's a specimen accountant's report. So, uh, from what we have been talking about, the contents of the accountant's report, you, you can see how the contents have been put together in form of a report now in a paragraph. It is devoid of the usual, the account show, uh, show of your view. We have audited the clinic and accordance with auditing standard. All of those uh, renditions in the standard audit report will not be there. It is just a simple report showing that you have looked at the forecast and uh, you have looked at the assumptions underlying it. You have looked at the accounting policies which the company normally adopts and which are applied to it. You have found consistency in its usage and you believe that the forecast may, may be relied upon in a way. That's what you are trying to say in the accountant's report. So ladies and gentlemen, that's what I want I have for you today uh, because I slated the meeting for one hour and now it is three minutes above that one hour. Uh, can I have your questions? How many, some, some of you have taken this course before, isn't it? Yeah, now. Uh, what do you Some of us did this before. This is four weeks. Some of us did it before. And I'm sure these things have been taught to you earlier. Is that not correct? Most of us dropped it, sir. Uh, to those who did it, if they have reservations or they have uh, things to complement, they should tell us so that they, they, don't, they don't shoot us. Any new person that has just come before, I mean, our bank yet to come, a bank, a bank is on strike. Is our bank not a, a joint coordinator for this concept? I don't know. 
uh, Abang absent. Uh, is father last uh, Noah is Noah still in school? Somebody can say. Allow me, I did Yes, sir. I'm with you, sir. You are a chattered late comer. Chattered late comer. Uh, no, sir. It's the network. It has been disconnecting me since. Tuesday, David. At large, Abi. So that one no come. I appreciate the huge attendance recorded today. I wish you sustain that level of attendance. It it makes it makes one happy, you know. So after two or three more lectures, we should be done for the semester. I want to take you. In our next lecture now, I'll be taking you through fraud investigation, specifically looking at the accountant's responsibilities and fraud and how frauds are investigated. I will match that with the issue of forensic accounting and forensic uh, uh, auditing, you know. So that will conclude all investigations investigations. After that, I'll be taking you through special audits. That one may not be more than one lecture, special audits. We just select some entities, restaurant, hospital, business society, solicitor, and then we discuss their insurance company, bank accounts, and then we discuss their peculiarities and the general approach to such to such a special audit. Then that will cover that area. Then we, we have we need another lecture for public sector uh, audit, uh, audit of public sector accounts, the duties, functions, appointment uh, of this uh, auditor general of the Federation and the one for the state. If we're able to do those three things more, my brothers and sisters, who go say we never do enough for this cause? Eh? So once you know all of those, then you are an investigator already, but don't investigate me. Ah, Ade Kalabi Sala, you are making your fresh entry, Abi, you don't did before. Ade Kalabi Sala. Talk now, you enter my class. Adekola. Oh, you see, she's still connecting to audio. And nobody can answer on, on, on her behalf. I'm not with them. I'll be your friend. <laughs> Maybe the network has locked her out again. Oh, she, she's just joining for the first time. She was not here before. I know where people go in for the first time. Are you, are you, can you hear us now? Abisala now. Ah. Okay. Yes, I think the girls network is not okay. She told me are about you, it yesterday. Are, are you, are you with her? Are you with her? Class. Are you with her? Ah, uh, no, sir. Uh -huh. So, you... Abisala, are you with us now? No. Anyway, ah, bless you, which one be no? I say, it's Adekala with us, you say no. <laughs> well, okay. anyway, it's so, it's so funny that we are ending, we are ending the class and yeah, she's joining. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, while we are battling to see if you can secure Adekala's attention, that will be all on our show for today. So the, the tape will be coming in due course.